Do you want an S tier wireless mouse even though you're broke as fuck? Is the Viper Mini too narrow for you? Do you want to up your social credit score by 250 points? If so, then you have to watch this video because this mouse is bean cheating. Shit, you already know I'm obsessed with it. <coughs> I can't get enough. Back with another milk. Hey! First of all, I want to mention that I bought this mouse with my own cash money AP and all of my opinions are my own, as they are with all of my videos and recommendations, as always. And as usual, we're gonna get over the boring stuff as fast as possible. This mouse spots a 3395 sensor. It comes shipped in some really high quality packaging. The unboxing experience is insane for its price and this pull is simply... Uh... Inside the box you'll find some high quality grips that are virtually the same as the BTL V2 ones, some smaller skates, a USB-A to USB-C cable, a dongle for that cable and a receiver to plug into it, and well obviously the mouse itself. Bruh. And also the QC on my copy is basically as good as it gets and I couldn't point out any glaring issues on it whatsoever. The overall size of this mouse sits between a small and a medium. It generally gives me a really familiar feeling of the Viper Mini, but it's definitely wider and not as tiny. I personally used to love the Viper Mini, but couldn't use it for longer periods of time since it's really narrow and actually would make my hand cramp. So what I used to do was actually installing some thick grip tape on the right side of the mouse to make it more comfortable to me. The feeling of that width with those additional grips actually reminds me a lot of the shape of the F1 here. And I personally found it to be much more comfortable for my 19x10cm aggressive claw grip. Overall the mouse is pretty flat and it doesn't have a pronounced hump anywhere that limits your movement. But one thing I don't like about the shape whatsoever are these heavily pronounced comfort grooves. You can see how deep down they go. These grooves are really aggressive and definitely force your fingers to sit right in the middle of them. I do know that a lot of people love comfort grooves, since they're, well, comfortable I guess. But for people who don't like to be told where to put your fingers on the buttons, this is definitely something you'll dislike. The mouse that this shape is actually most similar to is the Deluxe M800, which is virtually the same size as you can see here on ELO shapes. Compared to another budget mouse, the AJ199, the shape actually feels kind of similar in hand, with the main differences being the F1 being wider and the AJ199 not having these really aggressive comfort grooves on the main buttons. The sides of the AJS also aren't nearly as flat as the ones on the F1, but the overall size between these mice is actually pretty similar. One of the most important qualities in the mouse for me is the coating, and the one on the Dragonfly is alright. It's not slippery, but it's also not super grippy when in game. My hands get pretty warm when playing for a bit, and as soon as they've reached that point, I never had any issues when it comes to the overall grip of this coating. The main buttons on this mouse are actually the KLG M8.0s, and I gotta say that it's probably the first mouse where I've actually kinda enjoyed those switches. They don't feel heavy to click at all, and they're pretty tactile and nice to click. The side buttons, however, suck more ass than I do at Rocket League, and that's saying something. They're really heavy to press, and both have tons of pre and post travel. But honestly, when using them in game, I never had any real issues with them. The only time that they've annoyed me personally was when double pressing mouse 5, since that's the button I use to switch weapons in games like Exafind to reload cancel. The scroll wheel sounds a bit cheap, but feel wise it's nice and tactile. Mouse 3 is a bit heavy and it has been a tiny bit annoying in game. The stock skates on the Dragonfly, which I've actually instantly trashed, are these lower quality solid white ones that are pretty controlled, but yeah, at least they're pretty rounded. I'd personally recommend just getting some dart skates if you care about mouse feet at all, and I'll make sure to list some options down in the description below. The actual battery size of this mouse isn't specified anywhere on the spec sheet, but VGN said that this mouse should last you 65 hours. Since I first started using the F1 Pro, I've never charged it, and have still got about 25% charge left, which is pretty darn impressive, especially considering I've been using this for an entire week non-stop. This F1 Pro, together with the Pro Max and the MOBA version, all support 4K, 
but you'll have to get the high polling rate dongle for an extra 20 bucks to unlock that. If 4K is something that you are interested in, I'd recommend going with the MOBA version instead since that one has a much bigger battery and also comes with upgraded hardware for the same price. The upgrades on the MOBA version which probably interests you are the blue shell pink dot switches that are in that one, but I'm not entirely sure since the Chinese translation is a bit wonky. The Pro Max also has the same bigger battery that I just mentioned, but since they're priced the same, I don't see a single reason to not get the MOBA version. Having to spend up to 180 bucks for 4K on other mice is pretty nuts, and if it's something you want to give a try, this is one of the most affordable ways to do that. I have personally yet to experience 4K in all of its glory, since I've basically only had issues on my AMD CPU. And that's also the reason why I didn't get the 4K dongle, since I really don't want to troubleshoot for hours for something that doesn't make me better at games anyway. The software on the Dragonfly is the same as for all other Chinese mice with the same macro functionality and everything as always. You actually need to download it in order to set the sensor mode to high performance and if you want to lower your debounce time and stuff like that, you can do that there as well. I personally used a debounce time of 2 milliseconds and had no double clicks whatsoever. Also, if you're installing thicker aftermarket skates on this mouse like I have, I'd recommend bumping the lift off distance up to 2 millimeters. When it comes to my personal opinion, I personally have enjoyed this mouse quite a bit, especially with the ghost light dot skates. I played pretty well with it, but definitely not to my fullest potential. To be completely honest with you, I probably won't be picking up this thing ever again, mainly because of the really aggressive comfort grooves. I really enjoy not being told where to put my fingers, and that's exactly why I'd pick something like the AJ199 over the F1, since this doesn't have these really aggressive comfort grooves that this has, and also flatter sides. But then again, that might be a completely different story for you, so keep that in mind. Now, to the conclusion, who is this mouse for? If you're still in the Viper Mini Ultimate waiting room and you are okay with the shape being slightly wider and overall slightly bigger, you should definitely check this out. Considering the 320 euro price tag of the Signature Edition, which actually weighs the same as this F1 Pro, you really can't go wrong with spending 50 bucks on the Dragonfly. However, if you dislike these really aggressive comfort grooves and good side buttons are a must for you, you should definitely not buy this thing. If you were a fan of the Deluxe M800, I could definitely see you loving this mouse. But yeah, overall, for 50 bucks, this mouse is pretty based. As always, if you are actually interested in getting the mouse, I will leave some links down in the description for you to go ahead and buy it. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe for any upcoming reviews. And yeah, that's about it. Uh... Patrick, what are you doing with that weird-looking device in your hand? It's my Logitech G-102, SpongeBob. I'm practicing my aim for Apex Legends Esports. I'm the new player, you know. Wow, that's amazing, Patrick. How did you get so good? Well, Jacob suggested that I become a pro player and taught me all the tricks. He even said that I specialize in tracking with my G-Wolves H-Dies and Free Fall Space mouse pad. That's great, Patrick. You must be really good at Div Jacob suggested you. Yep, and I'm so good that even my mouse feels too light. I need something heavier and more powerful.